Macular degeneration is the most frequent cause of legal blindness in the United States. Approximately 25% of patients aged 70 or older are afflicted with this disease. We asked Dr. Small to explain what the macula is. The macula is a very special part of the retina. And the retina is the film in the camera. It's what the light is focusing on in the back of the eye. The macula is very small. It's only about five millimeters across. But within that very small area is where the fine, detailed central vision is, which is reading vision, driving vision, etc. So it's, it's a very critical part of, of human vision, particularly. And it's very important for independent living skills in humans. Um, so the macula is a very critical part. And what macular degeneration is, is an aging degeneration of this tissue. And even a small amount of disease can cause a lot of problems with vision. Macular degeneration, first of all, it's, uh, the real name is age-related macular degeneration, which implies that the number one risk for macular degeneration is, is age. And that's one of the risk factors that, it, that we can't control, obviously, or, or want to control. Macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness, irreversible blindness, in all developed countries throughout the world. Macular degeneration early on has no symptoms at all. In severe forms, it usually involves a central blind spot in the vision or distortion in the vision, things that should be straight door jams, tiles that, that are straight and start appearing uh, wavy or crooked or distorted. And that's usually an early sign of wet macular degeneration. Dry macular degeneration actually is more um, uh, insidious with very subtle uh, blind spots that develop in the vision over years and decades. And then very mild forms of macular degeneration have no symptoms at all. And that's why it's imperative for folks over 60 years of age to be examined very specifically for this with a fully dilated eye exam. What are the treatment options for macular degeneration? The treatment for wet macular degeneration has evolved uh, quite a bit within the last five or six years. The primary treatment now is to inject medications into the eye. And that is the best treatment we have. And most people get a significant improvement in vision within the first couple of injections. Um, the 80 percent of my patients see a significant improvement within the first uh, one or two injections. These injections are done on average of every four to six weeks, depending on which anti-VEGF agent I'm using. And the bad thing about these agents is they don't last forever. They wear off in the eye and typically the patient need subsequent injections. But the, these anti-VEGF agents have revolutionized how we treat macular degeneration. It's, it's been a great boom for our patients. One of the other uh, current treatments for wet macular degeneration is called photodynamic therapy with a light sensitive drug called Visudyne. This was approved by the FDA for the treatment of wet macular degeneration 10 years ago. And it was the first FDA approved treatment for wet macular degeneration. It's an interesting treatment. Most of our treatments for macular degeneration, wet macular degeneration, are spinoffs of cancer research. And basically the idea is a, a light-sensitive drug called Visudyne is infused in the, intravenously in, your, in the vein and it circulates throughout the entire body. So as this drug starts to circulate through the leaky blood vessels in the back of the eye, we sit the patient up at the laser the, and put a little contact lens and focus this laser on the leaky blood vessels. We turn the laser on, the laser activates the drug. The activated drug then binds to some molecules in the blood, which then bind to the lining of these abnormal blood vessels, and then it thromboses them, it clots them off. And what are the risk factors for developing macular degeneration? The number one risk factor for macular degeneration is age. Number two is genetics. Number three is smoking. Smoking increases your risk for macular degeneration and severe macular degeneration by, by like 400 times. It's awful. Smoking is one of the worst things a human being can do to, do to their eyes and their macula, not to mention the rest of their body. So smoking is awful, and smoking cessation is critical. One of the simplest and most effective methods for patients to monitor the health of the macula is A, the Rorschach test, B, the Amsler grid test, C, the litmus test, or D, the polygraph test. The answer when we come back. Now you can take the American Health Journal with you. The doctors you depend on for instant information are as close as your mobile phone. So go to ahjmobile.com and get the latest medical information you need. 
One of the simplest and most effective methods for patients to monitor the health of the macula is B, the Ansler grid test. In essence, a graph with a black dot in the middle. With normal vision, we're looking at the grid's central black dot. All lines surrounding the black dot will look straight and evenly spaced, with no missing or odd-looking areas. When there is disease affecting the macula, as in macular degeneration, the lines can look bent, distorted, or missing.